think you're right. People look at what we call primary dimensions of difference, age, race, sexual, gender, orientation. And we don't really sometimes think about those other preferences that are material to us building relationships or not building relationships or even feeling judged from others. Are you quick on your feet? Do you talk with your hands? Do you have an accent? How you approach a situation? All of those things can be career disruptors and, and, and limitations. And one of the things I found, I had a really good leader who wanted to know what would make me thrive? Joe, what's, tell me about your best day at work and why was it your best day? Asking those provocative questions um, that may not be so provocative, but you can get to provocative insights about how a person shows up either to their authentic style or their the prototype of the style of the culture of the organization. Um, and those could be very different. I would encourage leaders I can't underscore the importance of spending time getting to know your people. I used to go into meetings and focus only on the business. If it was an hour meeting, 60 minutes, I was on my to-do list. Now, even with my team, the first thing I start with, how was everyone's weekend? What's going on in your life? How are you feeling? Tell me something about either your family, your dog, your cat, whatever is important. And that's what we call lowering the waterline. From getting to some of those dimensions of difference or style, approach or behaviors, and even to understand what you value. Because when I know what you value, then I have a better opportunity to understand how to reward you because I know what's important to you. But if it's always about the business and we don't do some of what we would consider small talk, we'll truly never really understand um, how to lead a person.